welcome back in this lecture 25 i'll continue the discussion on polymers and solution and i will introduce solubility parameter for polymers in this lecture which will be utilized to predict the polymer solubility and i'll quickly discuss about polymer phase separation and fractionation now we have defined different types of solution earlier and one of those were regular solution and regular solution means the delta h mix now in this lecture and several lectures before and later also we are generally using delta h m or delta g m or delta s m as mixing enthalpy or mixing entropy or mixing gives free energy just don't confuse as a molar in this particular case we are talking about delta h mixing so for a regular solution delta h mixing is not zero and delta s mixing is equals to delta s mix for an ideal solution which means that miscibility occurs if delta g mixing is less than 0 which means that the enthalpy of mixing must be lower than the term t multiplied by delta s mix from our thermodynamic knowledge this is a negative term because we know from an ideal solution delta s mix is given by the combinatorial entropy which is always positive hence when you talk about minus t s term that will be negative hence this should not be a positive term having high value so the solution the formation of solution depends on existence of this as a zero or small positive value if it is zero then obviously this will be negative minus t dls will be negative formation of solution will be feasible even a small positive value will also allow the solution to form but if the value of delta h mixing is large positive then it will not allow the solution to form now to predict the value of delta h mix hildebrand hildebrand in 1970 ex basically proposed a expression for delta h mix which is given by or which is shown here where v mix is the molar volume of the mixture and delta is solubility parameter what is solubility parameter it is given by this expression where delta e v is the molar energy of vaporization and v not is molar volume of the liquid now this the term within the bracket is also called cohesive energy density it is related to enthalpy of or energy of vaporization which basically quantifies the cohesive forces between the molecules hence this term is generally expressed or called as co cohesive energy density now if the vapor is a ideal gas if we consider that then we can write delta e v as delta h v minus r t and the molar volume of the liquid can be expressed as the density of the liquid divided by the molecular weight of the liquid or the solvent hence using this expression we can actually experimentally determine the value of solubility parameter of the solvent or a liquid 
we can get the enthalpy of preparation from experiment and we can get the molecular weight and density from the experiment as well. Now, because this is a square, a square term delta 1 minus delta 2, this only allows the value of delta H mixing either 0 or a positive number. But in some specific cases where there is a strong hydrogen bonding between the solvent and the solute in this case polymer or a charge transfer interaction between the solute and the solvent, then that can lead to negative enthalpy of mixing which is not captured by the expression pro proposed by Hildebrand. Hence, this value will be 0 or lower positive number if the value of delta 1 is close to delta 2. If they are equal, then this would be 0. If they are very close to each other, then the value will be lower. Hence, the miscibility of the solvent and the polymer or a solute is preferred when the solvent and the solute has solubility parameter value close to each other. So, miscibility is predicted if the absolute value of delta 1 and delta 2 the difference is 0 or small. Now, this works well for nonpolar solvent and nonpolar amorphous polymer where these interactions like hydrogen bonding, charge transfer interaction or electrostatic interactions are absent and this cannot predict the solubility behavior of polar polymer and polar solvent capable of forming hydrogen bonding or participate in uh, electrostatic interaction as we discussed earlier as well. And it is not valid for crystalline polymer because in case of crystalline polymer, the dissolution process also need energy for crystallites to get become amorphous before it gets basically to dissolve in the solvent. So, basically the energy of crystallization is also required to be supplied before the polymer, the crystalline polymer can be dissolved in the solution in the solvent. So, the solution, solubility parameter of polymers, it can predict the polymer solvent and polymer polymer miscibility as well and it requires the knowledge of solubility parameter values for the polymers. As we discussed the solubility parameter for the solvents can be directly obtained from the experimental value of molar enthalpy of vaporization and molar volume. But for polymers because the enthalpy of vaporization cannot be measured, polymer cannot be vapor vaporized at higher temperature because in that temperature before that temperature of vaporization reached it the polymer usually get degraded. Hence, it is experimentally not possible to determine the enthalpy of vaporization value for polymer samples. Hence, to utilize that delta H mix or the solubility is maximum when delta 1 and delta 2 is equal. Using that concept, we can actually determine the or predict the solubility parameter value for polymers indirectly and the value of solubility parameter of polymer can be taken equal to the solubility parameter value of the solvent in which maximum the intrinsic viscosity is maximum for that particular polymer or if we are talking about polymer network cross link polymer network 
then the solu solvent in which the polymer is swelling to a maximum extent in that solvent we can take the solubility parameter value of that particular solvent same as the solubility parameter value of the polymer. However, the solubility parameter value of polymers can also be obtained indirectly by group contribution method which we will discuss now. Solubility parameter value of the solvents can be correlated with the structure, molecular weight and density of the solvent molecules. This for the solvent, but the for polymers we can use this expression to you estimate theoretically the value of solubility parameter. In this case, we are following the principle that the property of a substance in this case polymer are governed by a simple summation of contribution from individual parts in this case different groups present in polymer of its chemical structure and commonly we call this as group contribution method which means each group present in the substance in this case polymer molecule contributes and we get the value of the particular property by summing the values for all the groups present in the substance. Now, this is the expression which is used to calculate the solubility parameter of polymer. This can be used to calculate solubility parameter for solvent as well. Whereas, this is the density of the polymer m naught is the repeat unit molar mass and f capital F or upper case f i is the group molar attraction constant for that particular group i and small f i is the number of such group i present in the repeat unit. I will give an example which will make you make this more clear to understand. So, this is the density, this is the molar mass and this is the group molar attraction constant for group I and this is number of such group I present in the repeat unit. For example, take a polymer polystyrene. Now, if we count number of groups present in this repeat unit, CH2 group you have 1 CH2 group, 1 CH group and this 5 aromatic CH group double bond group and 1 this aromatic group plus we have a 6 membered ring. Now, each of these groups contribute some number which we called as we mentioned here that group molar attraction constant which are available in literature. So, we can actually add all these numbers to get this expression and with the knowledge of the density of the polymer and molar mass of the repeat unit, we can get the solubility parameter. So, in this case, we can multiply F i with this capital F i and to sum to get this summation and density value we know and M naught which is the molar mass of the repeat unit which is 104 gram per mole. From that, we can get the value as 18.2 you can do yourself and find out and verify this number and this is the unit this is SI unit also sometimes expressed as mega Pascal 
to the power 1 over 2. So if we for any unknown polymer for a or, or any polymer from the chemical structure if we can count the number of groups present in the repeat unit and sum this molar attraction constant for all the groups present and also we can count this additional structural features like six membered ring in this particular case present in the molecule repeat unit then we can determine or calculate the value of solubility parameter provided we know the value of density of the polymer and the molar mass of the polymer. These are some example this just to um, aware you that these values are available in the literature. So, these are the functional groups or different groups which make a polymer molecule and corresponding molar attraction constant values are available in the literature. More groups, more value for different groups and these are the structural features which you also need to include while summing up all the all the molar attraction coefficients if we have a conjugation this if we have a cis we have this contribution four member ring this six member ring as we as uh, just shown in the case of polystyrene. Now to find out the oh, this is the value which obtained for the polymers and using this group contribution method. These are available in the literature and you can find from any standard textbook. Now along with this value the solubility parameter value we also need to remember or keep it mind the hydrogen bonding capability of these polymers and these are generally estimated from the hydrogen bonding capability of the monomers from which the polymers are synthesized. For example, ethylene is a poor hydrogen bonding molecule. So, polyethylene is also poor hydrogen bonding capability. Vinyl acetate, vinyl chloride they have a medium hydrogen bonding capability and like polyvinyl alcohol it is strong or nylon which has a strong hydrogen bonding capability. Similarly, we also need to find out or you need to aware or keep in our mind the hydrogen bonding capability of the solvents also. And for solvents these are the value for this uh, solubility parameter this is not uh, shown here. So, this is delta. So, this is the value for solvent uh, solubility parameter and generally solvents are arranged or classified into three types where some solvents are poorly hydrogen bonded list is given here some are moderately hydrogen bonded and some are strongly hydrogen bonded. Now, this classification are done because we know like like dissolve like. So, if we want to dissolve a non-polar polymer like which has a poor hydrogen bonding capability then we should look for solvents which also have poor hydrogen bonding capability and we will look for a solvent which has close value of solubility parameter of that of the polymer. So, we will try to match if we want to dissolve or if you want to find a solvent for a particular polymer what is we are supposed to do we will basically match the solvent which 
the polymer in terms of hydrogen bonding capability as well as we will try to match the solubility parameter values close to each other. In that case, it is possible to find out a pair of polymer and solvent which will dissolve or which will be miscible with each other. So, the solubility parameter for a random copolymer can be calculated by this expression where this is a solubility parameter for the individual homopolymers and this is the weight fraction for the homopolymer. Alternative copolymers can be just find out the solubility parameter value for alternative copolymer can be uh, considered as a 50-50 composition. And, but there is no satisfactory method exist for assigning value of solubility parameter to block and graph copolymers. Now, generally, the temperature dependence of the solubility parameter can be neglected over the range normally encountered in industrial practice and most of the solubility parameter which we discussed are and also reported in the literature are done at 25 degree centigrade. As we mentioned that solubility can be expected if the difference between the solubility parameter of the solvent and of the sol solute in this case polymer is less than about 2 mega Pascal to the power half and there is no strong polar or hydrogen bonding interaction between either the polymer or the solvents. Crystalline polymers however will be swollen and softened by the solvent with matching solubility parameter but will generally not dissolve at temperature much below their crystal melting point and that is the reason polyethylene molecules are dissolved in solvent at higher temperature like at 80 degree and so on where the temperature is close to the melting point of the polymer. Sometimes we can match this solubility parameter value of the solvent by combine more than one solvent and we can find out the solubility parameter of a mixture of solvent by simply summing up their solubility parameter value multiplying by the volume fraction of that particular solvent and then summing up as shown here. Now, as we have seen that the advantage of solubility parameter model as proposed by Hilder Brand is that it is simple, convenient and it has predictive ability, but the prediction are not always accurate because the model is very oversimplified. It does not consider negative value of delta H mixing. Now, later on Hansen proposed another modification of solubility parameter by understanding that a solubility parameter system based on the assumption that the energy of evaporation, hence the total cohesive energy can be divided into three contribution. One is dispersion or London forces, polar forces and hydrogen bonding forces. Hence, the total energy of vaporization can be divided into these three components. Hence, the cohesive energy density can be also divided into three components and the solubility parameter can also have three contribution from dispersion forces, polar forces and hydrogen bonding forces. Now, there are ways which we can calculate or determine these values 
which uh, we are not discussing in this uh, course. Next, we will move to the phase separation behavior of polymer solution and when you basically dissolve a polymer in a solvent and the solution can have these four possible phase behavior. In this case, we are plotting temperature T with mole fraction of the polymer for example. Now, this is one phase that means the there is a miscible solvent and the region inside is a two phase. Similarly, this is two phase and this is one phase, two phase, one phase, two phase, one phase. What does it mean? that if a composition with mole fraction of the polymer in this any of this value will produce a miscible solution and above this point I am saying it again let us say this particular temperature above this particular temperature all the composition any proportion of solvent and polymer will form a one phase system which means it will be completely soluble system it will make a solution. Whereas, if you take one point like this here which corresponds to this temperature and this mole fraction this will form a two phase system that means it will be forming a polymer rich solution and a solvent rich portion. Now, this temperature this temperature above which all the composition of this polymer solvent system is miscible we call this temperature as UCST upper critical solution temperature which is defined as the temperature above which the polymer and the solvent is miscible in any proportion. Similarly, in this case this is reverse scenario where below this temperature the polymer and the solvent is miscible in all proportion and we call this temperature as lower critical solution temperature defined as the temperature below which the polymer and the solvent is miscible in any proportion. There is a possibility that we can have either of this in this case UCST is UCST is less than LCST and in this case UCST is greater than LCST. Now, it is not that every polymer solvent system will have all these four phase possible phase uh, behavior. This is a overall possible phase behavior for any combination of different polymer and solvent system this is general behavior. A particular solvent polymer pair may show one of this behavior or more than one behavior depending upon the particular pair we are discussing. Now, in this case if we just consider this UCST case, so this is temperature and this is volume fraction of the polymer and this is UCST. In this case we can also have this two line which we this is called binodal curve and this is called spinodal curve. 
and this region is actually a metastable region metastable region metastable and this is the two phase and this is one phase system. Now, we will try to use polymer uh, Flory Huggins equation to basically derive this uh, or explain this type of phase behavior. So, this is uh, Gibbs free energy of mixing per mole of lattice sites or we can describe this term as a Gibbs free energy of mixing per mole of segment and we can get by dividing the Gibbs free energy of mixing by total number of segments polymer segments plus the solvent molecule and this is given by this expression from Flory Huggins equation. Now, there could be two general types of variation of delta G m star with volume polymer volume fraction in a solution and first one is of this type. In this case, we are plotting delta G m star in y axis and polymer mole fraction in x axis. Now, if you consider a point here, see in this case point here, now to know whether the composition correspond to this mole fraction, volume fraction of polymer in the solution, whether it is stable solution or not. For that, let us imagine that this solution will phase separate into two different poly solutions, one with solvent rich and another will be polymer rich and we can choose any two such composition. For example, let us choose these two composition. So, this is solvent rich and this is a polymer rich phase. Now, to know whether this composition will spontaneously phase separate and form these two composition, we can find out following way. First, we need to draw a straight line connecting these two point which is called tie line and then we need to draw a vertical line passing through this point. So, we draw this line and the intersection point between this tie line and this vertical line pass it through this point. We should compare the delta G m star value with this point corresponding to uh, compared to this original point. So, we can compare these two points. Now, from going this composition to these two composition, the delta G mixing is actually becoming higher, which means this is not a spontaneous phenomena, which means that a solution polymer solution of this composition is a stable solution. And we can think the same logic for all these points across this composition, which means for this type of behavior, the polymer is soluble in all proportion with the solvent. Now, there is another possibility where again we plot delta G star m with a mole fraction and this is a possibility. Obviously, this the points below the, the um, composition below this point is stable as we discussed in the last slide. 
Similarly, composition beyond this point, right side of this point is also stable. Now, let us compare the situation or let us consider a situation a, compo, chorus, a polymer solution having a mole fraction of volume fraction of the polymer corresponds to this point. Okay. Now, if this has to phase separate between say these two points, we can draw a tie line and from the same logic which we have given in the last slide, we know that this is a stable composition which means the polymer is soluble in the solvent for this particular composition. Because this the intersection between the tie line and the vertical line through this point will have delta G mixing positive value. Now, let us consider another point here. Now, for this if we consider that it phase separate between this point and this point, then in this particular case delta G mix will actually come down if it is phase separates, which means a polymer solution containing this composition will spontaneously phase separate to a polymer rich phase and a polymer or solvent rich phase. Now, it will stop where it will phase separate till these two points which corresponds to the minima of these curves. Now, why it will not phase separate further or these two points correspond to equilibrium composition for that. So, these are the two composition which should be the phase separated equilibrium concentration which have corresponding volume fraction value. We call this phase as prime single prime and this phase as double prime and these are the volume fraction of the polymer corresponds to this these two points. Now, it can be shown that this line if we extend and to phi 2 is equal to 0 point which means the intersection of this tangent to this point and y axis will correspond to this delta G mix value which is for this particular point it is given by mu i prime minus mu i mu 1 not. Similarly, for this particular point we can write this as mu 1 double prime minus mu 1 dot. Now, because this is a common tangent which means this two term would be equal and which also means that mu 1 prime is equals to mu 1 double prime which means the chemical potential of solvent for this composition is same as chemical composition of the solvent in this composition which means they are in equilibrium. Similar logic can be given for the polymer also in this case also we can write that mu 2 prime is equals to mu 2 double prime which means the chemical potential of polymer for this particular composition is same as this particular composition which means these two phases are in equilibrium. Now, if you consider this point which is the inflection point then all the composition between this equilibrium point and this inflection point they are actually in metastable situation because if somehow we can if we apply more energy so that it phase separate beyond this point then 
it will spontaneously phase separate and come to these two equilibrium phases. So, the region in this area and also correspondingly this composition is actually metastable because if we apply enough energy so that the composition moves beyond this then it will spontaneously phase separate to this equilibrium points. So, these points we call spinodal points we call spinodal points and these two equilibrium points we call binodal points. Similarly, this is also binodal points. Now, this is for a particular temperature. Now, if we increase temperature or decrease the temperature obviously, the nature of this curve will change and let us consider how it can change and what will be the effect of temperature on this binodal points and spinodal points. So, if we this is the graph we described and if we increase the temperature. So, this is we are considering if this is the temperature is increasing in this case. Then what will happen the nature of the curves changes and at some temperature this curve corresponds to the first type of curve which I explained few minutes back which means for this temperature the polymer is soluble in the solvent in all proportion whereas for this particular curve the polymer is soluble beyond this point and beyond this point whereas intermediate point this is metastable and in this region this is actually not soluble. So, we have two phase in this region and this region we have one phase. So, this is one phase and this is one phase and this is the region we have two phase situation and these are the binodal points and these are the spinodal points. Now, similarly we have binodal points for these uh, all the other curves and spinodal points for all other curves as well. So, if we can connect those spinodal points and binodal points we can get this is the connection of binodal points and this connects the spinodal points. So, this gives you the phase diagram where we are plotting temperature versus volume fraction. So, beyond this temperature the polymer is soluble in the solvent at all proportion, but when the temperature goes below this particular temperature then is phase separate depending upon the volume fraction of the polymer in solution. If the volume fraction is either left side of this curve or right side of this curve then it remains as soluble, but if it is in between then it phase separate. Whereas, this, this region is actually metastable region and we call this temperature as UCST or upper critical solution temperature. Now, for these inflection points we can write this expression and for the critical points because it is the spinoidal curve is, uh, curve is turning around in this, in this point, 
we can write this expression and from the expression of delta g m star as we have written in few slides back we can get we can get this expression where this is the critical concentration or critical volume fraction which basically corresponds to this uh, so this is phi 2 so this is the critical concentration and which is given by this expression x is the number of fragments in one polymer chain similarly we can also get the critical value of polymer solvent interaction parameter from this expression by solving this these equations now we know now that the critical volume fraction volume fraction is considered here now x is number of fragments which is proportional to the molecular weight so x is proportional to the molecular weight of the polymer if i write m per molecular weight then it would be uh, x is x 1 by 2 would be proportional to m 1 by 2 and if x is large as the molecular weight is very high x is large then we can simply ignore this one and we can make this proportional to 1 over m to the power half so as the polymer molecular in increases or the polymer size increases this uh, critical volume fraction actually comes down and for a uh, normal size polymer which is beyond say 100000 or 50000 then typical value of uh, critical volume fraction come between 1 to 0.1 and critical value for this uh, volume uh, polymer sol uh, solvent interaction parameters comes in this range now as you can see this uh, this is your delta gm star and this is phi 2 and this is two phase and this is one phase region so if we change the size of the polymer as we increase the size we get the critical fraction polymer fraction to lower value okay so as the size increases as it predicts from this expression as the size is increased the critical volume fraction actually reduces similarly if we consider a situation where we are talking about lower critical solution temperature then also we can get similar behavior so this would be for a lcst type polymer behavior in this case also the critical volume fraction of polymer for phase separation actually comes down in value now we can correlate from this expression to find out the polymer solvent interaction parameter and from that we can also find out the relation between the critical temperature and theta temperature and entropic factor by from this expression so we come to uh, so using this uh, this uh, understanding principle we can actually use this principle for fractionating polymers so if you have a polymer solution then if we reduce the temperature for a case of ucst type behavior or we add non solvent then at the beginning 
the polymers having large molecular weight they actually phase separate and when we reduce the temperature further or if we keep on adding the non solvent then the next size polymer actually gets fractionate. So, in, in practically what is done that in a polymer solution non solvent is added just to bring the in, uh, start of phase separation and once that happen the temperature is increased little bit to make the complete solution clear solution and then slowly the temperature is reduced to phase separate out in the in different fractions. Other also the polymer solution is poured on top of a column having glass beads which are having different temperature. And as we go down in the column the temperature generally comes down which helps basically to collect different fraction of polymers. So, this is the way typically we do uh, polymer fractionation. With this I come to end of this, uh, 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 this lecture in next lecture I will start uh, chain dimension.